So it's around 7.30 in the morning and I'm going back to my house. It's pretty, it's pretty good outside. It's rainy though, but it's nice visual. I got some bread. Uh, we're running out of bread, so I'm going to make some breakfast and continue talking to you guys about the types of masters um, in Canada. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the types of masters in Canada. There are so many of you who've reached out to me on LinkedIn, Instagram and Facebook and asking me to make a video on the admission process in the thesis and course based masters here in Canada. In this video I'm going to tell you how you can get admission into the masters program here in Canada. So watch this video till the end so you don't miss out on any critical information. You're watching Talks with Janesh. Let's get started. In Canada there are two types of masters course based and thesis based. In course based masters you don't have to submit a thesis at the end of your program but in thesis based masters you have to do a full research and at the end of your program you have to submit a thesis which upon getting approved you will receive a master's degree. Based on that your master's is completed and then you can continue on to do a PhD or you can start working in a company. Now in course based masters submission of the thesis is not required and so in order to get admission you have to make sure that your resume is very strong. The admission officers are going to look at your resume and then determine whether they're going to give you an admission or not based on what they see on your resume. In your resume make sure you add some work experience because in Canada after you have completed your bachelor's you are technically ready to do a job so your resume must demonstrate why you want to do a master's. An ideal way to approach this is you've done your bachelor's, you've done a job and during this job you've found out a skill that you lack in to get this skill you need to attain this education and you will attain this education in this university in this course. That is what you need to put on your resume. Somehow that is what you want to convey to the admission officer. This skill that you lack you're going to acquire it by continuing your further education in this and this university and in this and this course. That was for course based masters. Let's talk about thesis based masters. You probably know what thesis based masters is. You have to submit a research paper during the course of your program and at the at the end of which you're going to receive your master's degree. Now this is the most essential part of your thesis program. The system here in Canada and around the world is you need to complete your thesis under the supervision of your professor. Under the guidance of your professor you will submit the thesis and then be awarded your master's degree. The main difference between completing your master's here in Canada and in other countries is in other countries you don't need a professor in the thesis based program. For example in India if you're doing your master's you're automatically going to be assigned to a professor who's going to supervise you and guide you but here in Canada you need to get a professor before you take, an, take the admission. In my opinion that is where most people lose hope and get disheartened because it is really difficult to find a professor and it's not that easy especially if you're not in the country here you're gonna have to send a lot of emails to different professors around Canada. The competition is insane. Sometimes the professor is also going to be paying you to do your masters so naturally it is going to be difficult to find a supervisor. You have to convince a professor to supervise you and if he or she agrees to do so then you can apply for the master's program in Canada. But even then if supposing that you've got a professor your admission is not guaranteed it's not over there you're still going to have to complete the remaining formalities generally if you've got a professor the remaining steps are kind of just formalities and your admission is almost 95 percent there however to convince the professor is the most challenging part just a strong resume is not going to be enough they're going to need strong written skills strong verbal skills email communication must be formal in your portfolio you could also include extracurricular activities attending conferences just anything to convince the supervisor to supervise you at the end it all comes down to one thing that is selling. How nicely can you sell yourself and portray yourself that you are a worthy candidate to the professor. Now the question is which professor you are going to email, which university you are going to apply and where you are going to start. Because there are over 90 universities and thousands of professors in Canada. Where you want to study and under whom you want to study and under what category that you have to decide. Biggest factor in making that decision is going to be your previous research experience. What topic have you done your research experience in? Let's talk about my university. Memorial University has so many professors, ABC, XYZ. Their research field is so and so. And for example, let's say that you're in computer science field like I am. And so your professors have many publications in the Automata theory. And in your undergraduate theory, you presented a paper in Automata theory in a conference. So, and you received a certificate for it. So that certificate is going to be proof that you're going to show to your professor that yes, you have some previous 
research experience in the automated theory and you are you're genuinely interested in his research and that is going to be an aid and help you present your case to the professor you must have some sort of documentation to show to the professor that you are genuinely interested in his research and so that he or she can agree to supervise you okay let's say you found a professor he's accepted you he's ready to supervise you and he's agreed to do it for the entire course of a master's duration and you're happy as a buffalo what now and what next you have to go through an interview process this can be either with the professor or with the admission officer and this process is different for every university you're gonna to have to find out what the process is for the university that you are applying to okay in my other videos I've seen hundreds of views but not every one of you have liked the video like this video because YouTube has its own algorithm that detects if a video has been enjoyed by its audience um, then they're gonna like it and then it automatically will promote the video to more users just like yourself who can be helped by this video so give the video a thumbs up I'm going to release more videos on master's programs and admission processes in the future I'm going to share with you what I know so if you've not subscribed subscribe right now and also if you've got a question put it in the comments below I'm generally very responsive it's been fun guys talk to you later